Hello and welcome to another iDoctor UK tutorial video. In this video, I will show you how to safely remove and replace the charging port on an iPhone 7 Plus. To carry out this job, you're gonna need the following things. A new charging port, I always recommend buying the best quality you can here. Ideally, it's going to be an original pulled part. A pentalobe screwdriver, crosshead screwdriver, tri-point screwdriver, a razor blade, a guitar pick, some fine tweezers, and finally, a small amount of isopropyl alcohol. As always, I will link all the tools and equipment you need for this job in the description below. So to get started with this repair, just like every iPhone repair before this one, we'll begin by removing the two pentalobe screws in the bottom of the device. Once they're out of the way, take your razor blade and carefully create a gap between the metal chassis of the phone and the plastic bezel of the screen. Once that is loosened, you can lay the phone flat and open it up like you would open a book from the back page. Prop something behind that to stop it from falling over and stretching the cables there. Now we're inside the phone, take your tri-wing screwdriver and remove the four screws holding down the screen and battery flex cable, then take your guitar pick and disconnect first the battery to isolate power from the device, followed by the two screen connectors. With those now disconnected, move up to the top of the phone and remove the three screws securing down the front camera flex. Use tweezers to remove the shield, then use your prying tool to disconnect the flex cable. This will now allow the screen to be removed from the chassis store that somewhere safe for reinstallation later, then use the point of your tweezers, or if you have one, a SIM ejection tool to remove the SIM tray, then make sure that the pin for the SIM tray inside the phone isn't obstructing the logic board from lifting. Now take your standoff screwdriver and remove the two standoff screws at the bottom of the logic board. Then with your prying tool, disconnect the charge port flex cable, and using tweezers, disconnect the two coaxial cables. Moving on now to the loudspeaker, remove the two screws at the top of the speaker and store them safely, then repeat on the bottom three screws. These are all crosshead screws, but most are different sizes, so it's important to store these neatly while you work, so there's no confusion when you're reassembling the device later. Anyway, once those screws are out, lift out the speaker from the top and put that to one side for later. Then move on to the Taptic engine and take out the three crosshead screws securing this down. Again, store these methodically so that you know where they will go back into. Once these screws are removed, there are two screws that secure this plastic shield into place and another four screws securing the charge port. Remove all of these, and I really can't stress this point enough, keep those screws organized. Once all the screws are out at this bottom end, use tweezers to remove the plastic cover in the bottom left, and underneath that, you will find the connector for the Taptic engine. Use the pick to release it, then take away the Taptic engine itself. For the final two screws, you'll need to stand the phone up where you will see two crosshead screws either side of the port. Remove those final two so that we can remove the faulty charge port. To remove the port, add a couple of drops of isopropyl alcohol to the two microphones that are stuck down to the bottom of the phone, then pry them out using the pick. Then add a few more drops underneath the charge port flex cable and using tweezers, lift out the flex cable from the bottom. You will encounter some resistance where the port is still folded underneath the logic board. So just add a little more isopropyl alcohol to loosen the adhesive then slide the charge port from underneath the logic board. Now we can take our new port out of the packet and remove all the plastic films on the back of it, exposing the adhesive. Then my number one tip to sort of help retard the adhesive here is to just add a few drops of isopropyl onto the back of the flex and this is going to help it slide in, into position instead of just sticking anywhere you lay it down. Also, making a bend in the flex here will help it connect better into place. Carefully wiggle the port into place under the logic board and into its final position, then connect the FPC into place. Next, you need to ensure that the port is in its final position and make sure that all the holes in the port line up with all the screw holes, then line up the microphones into the little slots that they sit in. Securing the two logic board standoff screws into place means that the flex cable won't slide around and disconnect or fall out of line or anything like that. Then begin reversing the steps that we took to remove the port, starting off with the two screws either side of the charge port. 
Reinstall the Taptic engine, securing it down with the three crosshead screws, then the flex cable, making sure that it clicks properly into place, then go ahead with getting that little plastic cover into place, securing it down with the two screws. This little grounding pin will connect to a grounding point on the back of the screen, so make sure that this thing is in place before securing the four screws on the charge port. Remember the two longer screws that go in the top and the two shorter ones in the bottom. Next up, we're gonna get the loudspeaker back into place, secure the two top screws, and the tricky part here is getting the two coaxial cables properly into place. Take your tweezers and ensure that they clip in properly. If you don't, there is a risk that the vibrations from the Taptic engine will make a noise with those cables moving around. Once they're clipped in, get those last two screws into place at the bottom and connect the two coax cables to the board. This is easiest if you use your tweezers to get them into place, then use the back of the tweezers to clip them into place. Before reinstalling the new screen, it's important to remove any old adhesive still on the chassis. Use tweezers to remove the bulk, then take your new adhesive and secure it into place on the chassis of the phone. Use the back edge of the tweezers to make sure it's stuck down well and peel away the first part of the film. Offer up the front camera flex to its position on the logic board and secure it into place using your finger. Then place a shield on top of that and secure down the three tri-wing screws. Move down to the LCD and touch flexors and repeat securing the flexors first, then the battery connector, followed by the shield and four tri-wing screws. With that secure, remove the final film on the dust seal and fold down the screen. Place the top of the screen into place first, then apply pressure to the edges of the screen. It's also important to ensure that the screen flexors are tucked away properly here, as there is a risk of nipping the cable when re-securing the screen. Reinsert the SIM tray and secure the two pentalobe screws in the bottom of the device. Now it's important to properly test that the new port is fully working. Start by connecting the lightning cable whilst the phone is off to test that inserting the cable will prompt the device to boot. Then once the phone's booted, ensure that the phone charges, flipping the cable, reinserting it a few times just to make sure that it works both ways repeatedly. Now open the Voice Memos app to ensure that the microphones work on loudspeaker too. Then open Settings and toggle any of the setting sliders to ensure that the vibration function works. Thank you for watching and see you next time.